everybody, um, all you employee to entrepreneurs. I am so excited today because I have a special guest that uh, we have the opportunity to interview. And this is Bobby Umar. And Bobby Umar is the president of Ray Allen and CEO of DYPB, which means discover your personal brand. But the inspiring thing about Bobby that you'll all love is that he is a five-time TEDx uh, speaker. He is uh, one of the uh, top social media influencers in the world. Um, and he has done um, how many best-selling books now? Um, is it more than one? Oh, no, just one best selling three books. Oh, one. Yeah. I thought you had done another one. So yeah. anyways, he is one to watch. He's, I have been watching him and following him for a long time. And I am so excited to bring him on to chat with us today and tell us about his journey and what he's doing these days during the crazy times of this pandemic. So welcome, Bobby. Thank you. Excited to be here, Kim. Uh, pleasure to see you and also see everyone else. Yes, yes. Everybody's um, excited to be watching you and hearing your story. So um, I know that uh, I know a little bit about you, but if you could just explain to everybody a little bit about where you started and, and how you became an entrepreneur, because I love that story. Sure. So uh, I, I was what I would describe as a loss leader. So I started out as an engineer, did mechanical engineering and design for uh, Bombardier. While I was there, I was bored. So I started a musical theater company, grew that to about 150 people in under four years. Uh, then I decided to do my MBA and go into uh, actually performance, like, you know, uh, TV and TV and film. So I did my MBA in mark and brand marketing. I had to do the switch. When I got out, it didn't work so well. I had a hard time finding a job in that. So then I took the next best thing, which was brand marketing. So I did work for Dove, worked for Kraft for a few years. And then eventually I was like, you know what? This is not working out for me either. So let me just leave. And at this point, I was like, this solution was what, what, what was I going to do? Like, I, I couldn't figure it out. And so I dove in my personal brand and I found certain things that aligned with who I was and also what people were telling me over for, the, for years. And so I decided to launch my speaking career and become a professional speaker. So I've been doing that for almost 15 years now. And I've traveled around the world speaking at conferences, at companies, at offsites, and also universities and colleges. Initially about leadership, but then I started getting into different areas of expertise that kind of evolved. The first one was networking and authentic relationship building. The second one was personal branding. And the yeah. third one was digital media and social influence, uh, which is kind of why I have so many followers now too. So, all, and now all three of those things kind of manifest in my, my topic, which is what I call power of connection. And then about uh, seven years ago, I started a conference called DYP Discovery Personal Brand. And there's like 300 people there and it was great. We did that for several years. And then someone said, you know, personal brand is a really hot topic. Why don't we... Try start do a startup and start doing this year round so we, we launched a startup uh dypb and we started doing stuff year round uh and manifesting our personal brand expertise in four ways which is in-house trainings uh live events online tools and resources and then coaching consulting uh what's interesting though now of course is with the with the, the covid thing is that the first two things of in-house trainings and uh, doing live events uh, in-person events uh, doesn't work anymore so we have to pivot Similarly, as a speaker, um, you know, the live events aren't happening anymore. So now I've had to pivot. But, uh, you know, until this happened, things were going well and I really enjoyed it. And I've loved doing it. I love doing the TED Talks. It's been a really wonderful, fulfilling experience. So um, tell, tell us how, how you became a TEDx speaker. Like, you know. Yeah, good question. Um, it's you not know, easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is that when, when I was the first approach, I had no idea what it was. So, uh, you know, I was like, oh, what, what, what is TEDx? What, what is that? And so then I looked at it and I was like, wow, every single famous person or, or scientist, philosopher, public speaker, politician, sports hero, they, they've all done a TED Talk. And I was like, wow, this is great. Look at that. Maybe I should do one. And then I realized this is going to be good for my brand. So I better, you know, do a good job of it. And so I, I can tell you, like, I've never been more nervous in my life for a speech than that. Uh, actually, there's two. The, 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 my first TEDx talk, I was super nervous and I rehearsed it three times. The other time I was super nervous was when I had to speak to a bunch of grade six, seven, eight year olds, grade six, seven, eight <laughs> students, because that's terrifying too, uh, in, yeah. in a different way. And so, you know, that, that was, and how, how did I get it? Well, one of the things that happened was I did four TEDx talks within the span of two years. And 
the reason I got it, honestly, was because I had built a strong thought leadership personal brand. People knew who I was and what I talked about. They wanted me on their stage at their event. And so all four of those ones, I got asked to come, right? I was also asked to come to three more, but I said no to those for various reasons. There's some TEDx talks you should say no to uh, for a variety of reasons. Right. And then the fifth one came um, just two years ago. I saw, I, I've always had a couple of TED Talks in my back pocket that I've been wanting to, wanting to do. And I saw one where the theme was power of connection, which is the hashtag I use and I use for my own, my own broadcast show on LinkedIn. And I was like, oh, I better apply for this one. And let me just send a quick video. And then I got in right away and uh, delivered my fifth talk. Wow, that's amazing. And the key to getting one is, you know, having a good idea that aligns with the theme and making sure you know how to pitch in a way that, you know, the organizer will say, yeah, we definitely want to bring this in. And then you've like turned that into this huge um, speaking uh, business. Um, I know that it, it's not, you know, huge right now, but yeah. um, how, um, how did that transform? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would like to know how they can take their brand and, and actually do speaking and become. Yeah, that's authority. a good question. Yeah, good question. So uh, one thing I'll say is that, you know, so I run a speaker mastermind group where I teach speakers how to actually build a speaker brand, a speaker story, and also generate speaking gigs and maybe build some income out of it. Some people do it not for the income. Some people do it they want to give back and get out there. But still, I help those people as well. And one of the things that, and, you know, and we're pivoting now because now it's about virtual talks right. as well as building relationships for three to six months that will lead to stuff in the fall or or next year uh, but in, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know how that how, how that all happened oh sorry what was the question again just make sure i got it right so how did you turn that into a, um, a business of a speaking business yeah so i mean i think right. the thing that people need to understand is that every single one of us has a uh, experienced experience stories and we have expertise and so i'm also a big huge proponent of thought leadership brand building and if you want to build a strong thought leadership brand, you need to get out there and speak more. So whether you're doing video content on LinkedIn or getting out to panels or events or virtual or webinars, whatever it is, you yeah. need, every single one of us has expertise. It's just a question of taking your expertise, taking your experience, and then crafting the right speaker brand story around who you are. And then secondly, coming up with the topics that are going to resonate with people. So it doesn't matter whether you're 20 or 50 or 80, you can actually do that and put that out there. I think most people, when they, when they struggle to do it, is because they don't have the right story or brand, they don't have the right topics, and they don't know how to reach out to people. But ultimately, it's it's once you have manufactured all the materials you need to get out there and pitch to people, it's not that difficult to actually get uh, speaking opportunities. You have, but you have to be willing to put in the work and ask people because people want people want your expertise. You you all have something that you can offer uh, from your experience that you know people might enjoy, and so it's a question of just taking the time to craft that. And put that together. Yeah, um, I oh, I think that's such a great point. I love um, you know when I work with clients too. One of the things I try and do is pull that story out of them because there's so many people that feel like you know they don't have anything to say. So how do you how do you get people to tell their story? Well, I mean, one is to you know create an environment of trust and vulnerability. And often I'll, I'll share my own kind of challenges or vulnerabilities, and that actually allows them to open up. The second thing is kind of lay out, you know, what, what's the benefit of it? I mean, everyone knows people matter, relationships matter. Everyone also knows the story to stories and storytelling is a really powerful way to connect with an audience and connect with people. So when you mention those two pieces of information, people are more willing to say, okay, well, let's figure out the story. And then the, the way I extract the stories, I, I'm willing, I say, look, I'm going to ask you some really pointed questions. Some of them are going to be random, but they're going to be probing and deep questions. So just, just go with me on this. And whatever I create or whatever we create together, you will have final say in what you think feels good. And when you do that, then I'm able to, like, you know, in 30 minutes, start crafting and pulling different things from them uh, about, uh, about what they're doing. One of the things that always happens is uh, when you talk to people is they often tell you the what, they don't tell you the so what. And that's important. And the second piece, and the second thing to keep in mind is tell us the feeling and the emotion behind it, right? So whatever you do, how did that feel? So yeah, so I, 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 did, a, I did a 100 meter dash in under 10 seconds. That's great. How did that feel? Right. I mean, right. There's, there's the achievement or the what or whatever that thing you did. But let's talk about the emotional journey. And that's that's what creates a much more powerful story. Oh, I love that. That's great. Taking it that one step further, because you're right. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, I did this. Yeah. But why, why does it matter? Well, if you look at a resume or you look at a LinkedIn profile, right, you'll see 
you know, vice president of this, director of this, uh, boom, boom, and all these things. And they often will say, here's what I did, my role responsibility, here's my achievements. But, you know, in the resume or the LinkedIn profile, they don't talk about the feeling and the story behind it. So often I can also take their profile. They look, let me extract, what's the story behind every single one of these points? Because right. there should be a story behind every single one. And that's where it gets interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so um, it's it must be amazing what you can get out of people. So who are the types of people that you would normally work with now doing well, this? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you know, the, the truth is I've worked with everybody from senior executives to entrepreneurs to students. But I think the, the type that I really like to work with these days, uh, they're actually kind of my age now. So I usually focus on people who are like kind of senior professionals. Um, usually about 20 plus years experience, 20, 30 years experience. And they're trying to figure out, they're now thinking about, um, you know, I've been doing this job for 20 years and, you know, is it really what I want my legacy to be? Maybe not, you know, or I have the side hustle I want to do, or I want to transition to something else. And they're thinking about their legacy and their story and what they want to do. They're at that age between like, you know, 40 to 55. And they're thinking about the next 20 years, the next 20, 30 years. That's the people I typically like to work with because they're, um, they're, they, well, first of all, I relate to them okay, and, I, and I share my story, but yeah. I think they're, they're trying to figure that out because I think a lot of people follow a path of success defined by the people. They get that, that high level of vice president or whatever, or even CEO, but they get that, that director of vice president level. And they're like, okay, now what? I'm here. I'm not, I've been here for two years or five years or 10 years. It's like, okay, you know, where's the, uh, uh, where's the, where's the, where's the joint life? Where's the fulfillment? Uh, because that's where they start thinking about that thing, right? They yeah. start thinking about the fulfillment piece, right? Uh, you know, ultimately, like there's, um, you know, there's, there's uh, personal branding is something that, that gives you three things. One is it gives you alignment, more alignment and meaning and purposefulness in your life. That's that, you know, like something that aligns with your values. Uh, and, and number, number two, it gives you more focus and so more clarity and direction around what you're doing. And then the third one it gives you is more impact. So that story, that legacy, that uh, success and the in the beginning when you're young you know you're focused on you're focused on uh, focus and impact that's what you want focus and impact you don't think about the alignment so much and when you get older uh you're not thinking okay now how do i uh get that alignment that's what i really want i really want some alignment and meaning with what i'm doing and i still want that impact but i want that alignment and that, and that meaning. so it becomes a different conversation so that's the type of people i like to work with yeah interesting too because like it's um, you mentioned professionals, maybe they've, you know, come to the top of their um, career or of what they want in right. their career. And then it's like, okay, what's next, right? And they um, they really do have so much to offer, but how do you sort that out and decide what you're going to do next, right? Yeah, and uh, I think that they, they don't know because they haven't taken the time to really understand what their brand is and where it stands. And then from that, they can then forge where they want to go. Because once you understand your brand, your values, things like that, you can understand, okay, what's here? What have, what have I done? What's what's missing? Where do I want to go? So mm -hmm. like even another, there's another person who just contacted me just last week. Uh, he's the CEO of a, of a tech company, an engineering company. And, you know, he's feeling lost because he's been doing it now for 25 years. But he's like, 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 so he's like what's next? Like, what, what yeah. else can I do? And he still has a lot more life to, life to live. Yeah. So it's a very, it's a very common, common challenge for a lot of people to, to figure that out because, uh, you know, nobody starts off their career thinking, I'm going to work for this company for 50 years and I'm going to help them make a billion dollars and that will be my story. Nobody thinks that way. Uh, we yeah. all want to do something bigger and better than ourselves and have something that's more meaningful than making some other company a uh, million dollars. Right. So that's why I left in the first place. The <laughs> yeah. World, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you could uh, share one piece of advice to new budding or want to be entrepreneurs or people that are trying to grow their business using a personal brand, what would you say would be the most important thing or the thing that you need to start with? Well, I mean, the branding piece is really important because if it doesn't align with what you, what you care about, then you're going to hate doing it. And it's going to be, it's gonna be a pain to hustle it out. But I think the other thing that comes into play is um, when you're starting a business, like, get tons and tons of feedback like you know put it out there talk to people get their feedback have them continually criticize and, and you know give constructive criticism give you feedback to, to try to you know make you answer the tough question about the business to make sure it's legitimate because you know a lot of people have ideas but are they good business ideas 
not necessarily. So you need to really flush that out and really be willing to tell everybody and get the feedback as much as you can so that you can then design the right, you know, target objective goals, metrics, and strategy to grow the business. Because if everyone's saying it's, uh, it's all bad or, or, they, or they ask you questions you can't answer, or you're like, oh, well, I, didn't, I never thought about that or I can't answer that. Well, then, you know, maybe it's not a good idea. And <laughs> I think too many people proceed down a path without actually first thinking about whether it's actually legitimate or valid. Yeah, that's great. Love that. Love and that, that feedback is ongoing forever, right? I mean, once you develop a mindset around feedback and being open to feedback, forever will it take you and your business to evolve. Like I've evolved my business over the years. I've evolved my, my mission statement, my why statement. I've, I've changed it because I've been listening to feedback and I always get feedback from people. And I've adjusted and evolved on the way. Like, you know, I became an expert in networking and I would talk about networking and do that all the time. And then social media became quite prominent and I had to evolve, or evolve adapt or die, right? So I learned about how to uh, network online and what people were doing, what the research was. And so I, that became part of my, my, my stuff because if I didn't, then I'd just be talking about the traditional networking live in person, but not the social media stuff. Yeah. So because we're having this crazy time and everybody's online, um, you know, I know that you developed a huge following. Is there any tips you can give people that they can use to develop their online presence? Well, I mean, uh, again, invest time in your personal brand, really understand what that is, knowing who your target market is and how they feel and what you're doing to serve them. But then when it comes to the content, right, try to always create content that's of tremendous value to them, right, yeah. to serve them and to give them as much value and help them. And a lot of people worry about, you know, giving away too much of their information. Like, you know, I, I, like I have a speaker mastermind program and I have a personal brand program. Do I, but I talk about everything in those, in those programs. Uh, even on my my videos and stuff. Why? Because I'm not giving it away. Like it's fine. Like I'm I'm giving it away. But for the most part, it, it's very helpful and it adds value to this conversation. So I think that if you do, if you create, if you understand your target audience, you create cons value added content, and you're doing it consistently, you will start to grow. And that's really the the basic trick uh, of doing so. At the same time, there's other there's other things you can do, like in terms of you know, trying to trying to get influencers involved, influencers involved, using the right hashtags and whatnot. Those are more tactical things, but really it's about putting together great value to content on a consistent basis. And like, I know you do a great job of this is um, you go live on video all the time. Um, how important do you think that is? Because I'm always trying to encourage my audience to, to try it and it, it can be very scary. So yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, you know, it's the same. It's the same fear that people have about networking. Like they go to an event. Oh, I don't want to talk to anybody because I'm going to look bad and I'll feel bad. And what if I say something dumb? The exact same thing as video. Video is essentially just going to a live event and talking to someone in person. So it's you live in person. And so I understand those fears. Those they're normal. Everyone feels that way. The yeah. question is, what can you do about it, right? So you know, if you can actually prepare and rehearse and you know, and put and put together the right thing, you're going to be okay. Now, live stream is harder because it's again like, like a real networking event. Whereas doing a video, if you don't like it, redo it. You know, script it out. Do what you want. Make sure it's the way you want it to be. Uh, and then again, get feedback from people. Get three people you trust. Get get them to give you feedback until such times that they love it. Any of you still are uncomfortable? If your three best friends love it, you should put it out there because it's actually going to do a good job for you. And I think a lot of people, you know, don't take the time to you know get that feedback and ask for their friends to do it. But uh, and, and here's a stat for you that's really interesting, which is. You look at LinkedIn videos, right? So uh, of LinkedIn, 650 million users, only only 1% create, you know, uh, consistent content. And of that 1%, only another 1% create video content. So that's a... And, and out that's of a, the 1%? Yeah. Out so basically 1% of 1% are wow. creating video content. And so, you know, there's an opportunity here to be the one that's creating video content and, you know, and getting some incredible traction from it. There's a, there's a guy in the US, he's a plumber. But he talks about plumbing, you know, and, he, and he's he's actually well known now, and it's actually quite cool because you know he's he's, developed, he's established himself as a thought leader in the plumbing industry. Who you never would have thought videos online, but it's working for him. So wow. I think it's great. And then yeah. the other thing I'll add is, you know, uh, videos are far more effective than photos and just text because there was a research study by Forces Research that said that, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. According to Forces Research, a one-minute video is worth 1.8 million words. And that is powerful when you think about it. And the yeah. final thing I'll say is when you do live streams versus actual videos, when I do a, my, I do a live stream every Monday, Wednesday, on LinkedIn. And, uh, and 
what happens is there's a huge ROR, which is a return on relationship. People love the fact that you're alive, you're accessible, and it makes you more human. And it just creates a huge increase in the relationship building with someone when you go, when you go live. So if you're able to do that, uh, I highly recommend it because we're doing it right now. And I think people, people prefer that than if, let's say, you ask me questions and I answered in text and you post a picture of us and then there's the, there's the article. That's yeah. not the same. It's yeah. better to do this. Yeah. And I think we have to embrace this now. Like we really Absolutely. do. You know, I always, I always say video is the future now, yeah. <laughs> but it is, it is what people are doing. And now with you know, virtual is even more important. So that's why, again, that I think a lot of people now are like, I need to do more webinars, need more videos, more live streams. It is so important, especially now in this, this COVID world to create some really great value added content virtually. So yeah, I think everyone should be doing this. Yeah. Oh, this has been great, Bobby. I really, really appreciate it. And I think you've given us some really good value as you always do. Um, as you said, you are live uh, twice a week, is it? On LinkedIn? Yeah, on Mondays and Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m. At 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. And um, that you ha if you haven't seen uh, Bobby speak um, too, you can um, Google the TEDx um, TEDx talks, which are fabulous as well. Um, and is there anything else that anywhere else that people can or should reach out if they want to uh, get in touch with you? Yeah, so I mean, you know, across social media, I'm at the handle Rayhan Bobby, like Twitter, Instagram, all the different ones. Then uh, my website's uh, www.rayallen.com for speaking and training and coaching. And that's and and then that's I also R A E right R A R A E A L L A N. And then I have my uh, dypb.ca, which is where the personal branding stuff. So if you want help there, that's a place to go as well. Right. Well, thank you so much. This has been great. I'm really, really uh, thankful for you to come on and speak to everybody. Um, we've got some hearts and some hellos. Um, so anyways, thank you so much, Bobby, and um, you take care and good luck with your speaking events. Um, hopefully they come back because I know yes, you love yes. doing <laughs> Thanks so much, Kim. I do appreciate it and uh, great to talk, talk to you and everyone else. Thanks so much. Okay, take care. Bye, Bobby. Bye.